Hello and thank you so much for joining me tonight for some Saturday Night Crafting. I've got another really awesome, fun, quick and easy project to share with you and I've got two different options on how we can do this um, technique that we're going to do tonight. I'm starting out with a 5x5 five five inch card base and I went ahead and pulled out some sentiments that were going to work for my card. I want a nice big sentiment and then some little sub sentiments. These are the colors I'm using tonight. Uh, for my card you can use whatever colors you want. You can do whatever color or whatever size card you want. This technique will work really well. I'm also going to use another product tonight called a Gina K masking paper. Now I did try several other kinds and several other brands and for whatever reason they just don't work. Whatever is in this is unbelievable. <laughs> this product just worked a dream for me tonight with this technique. We are going to make a mask with it but of course if you haven't got any of this kind of paper you can just take plain ordinary cardstock just go with um, as thin as possible and use that instead of this and you'll just have to tape it on with a bit of low tack tape and then you should get the same effect you just will need to replace your bit of cardstock. This mask here lasted me all my cards and I did a whole ton of different cards so it will last and last and last and hold up against all the ink which is the amazing bit and it's so nice and thin that you don't get any of that kind of raised edge along the sides at all so when we put our images down they go right up against that edge. So our first option we're going to use stamps so if you don't have any stencils you can use stamps. I don't know about you but I have a lot of little tiny annoying stamps. I also have some ones that I love which are the ones I'm going to use today but I have a ton of those stamps that come in a magazine sets and they're just so tiny and what do you use them for? What do you do with them? This is a great way to use them. So I've grabbed some stamp sets here and all I'm going to do is take out all the super small tiny-ish ones and I am going to lay them across the front of my card. So my mask is on top of my card and I'm just going to simply place all these stamps on there. These are all photopolymer so they will all stamp at the same height and level. If you've got the more silicone like stamps make sure you're just using probably all the same kind. So if you've got silicone stamps use all silicone. If you've got the photopolymer ones use all photopolymer otherwise you might get a weird kind of different stamp uh, to your image. I'm using a stamp platform so that I cannot line them all up. Obviously if you've got a nice big block you could do the same thing and just put a block on top of it. I like the stamp platform because I can stamp again and again and again. So if my ink isn't brilliant and my inking job isn't great I can re-stamp it. Now here's some more of my fun little recycled foam bits. I bought lots of gel nail polishes over the past couple of years because I like painting my nails and I needed some storage cases so I bought these storage cases and you had to pop out the holes for the nail polish. And that's what these are. They are the foam pop-out bits. And I've got a good hundred of these in my stash now. And they are brilliant for this technique. So I'm just using recycled old foam. You could use a kitchen sponge. Whatever you've got to hand. You could use finger daubers. That will work. Um, a blending brush. Probably not as well. But we're just applying ink. And I'm slightly overlapping my foam as I go. And just inking up my little DIY stamp. So I did it about four times I think three or four times but I did do each color individually just to get it really saturated so it wouldn't dry in between when I was stamping and in the end this is the result so this is all using just stamps little tiny fiddly stamps and I get this gorgeous beautiful background with the kind of blended ombre rainbow look to it and my sponges have lasted me almost every single card I made today until the very very end when I did a few extra ones they lasted me with all the ink that was on them Option number two is to use stencils and we're going to come in with our mask again and place that right back on top of the card. Took only a couple seconds to do. Uh, it was brilliant. You just laid it right back down. I just was very careful to make sure that if any of that ink was wet on top of that mask that I wasn't then smearing it onto my card base. I'm just double checking. I'm not going to smear it around and give it a nice firm press down. You could always stick a bit of scrap paper over top and give it a firm rub. I've got this lovely Bruce Monroe stencil and I'm just going to go ahead and stick that onto my card front, flip it over and I'll give it a little bit of tape from behind. You really don't need this much tape. In the end, I think by like the last one that I was doing, I just used one little strip of tape. But I really didn't want this stencil to move around and I wasn't sure with my new little finger daubers, my DIY finger daubers, how much that would shift. 
So I'm going ahead and applying some ink and here you can see I didn't even have to ink it up again. There's plenty of ink already on these so I just went ahead and used them again. Now you can go as heavy handed or as light as you like. Um, after doing this card I realized that actually I probably should have gone a bit lighter so that I could put my sentiment on and have it stand out quite a bit more. But you'll see I've got uh, three different options of what you can do to kind of put your sentiment on which I'll share with you at the end of the video. So here's the first one. Obviously if I had a nice circular stencil, I wouldn't even need the mask and it somehow lined up beautifully in the center so you can't see like any edge to it, but we do know that the stencil was bigger than that. This is the next one that we're going to do together, which I got really carried away with. Exact same technique, but I used the paper rose stencil, which is this floral stencil. And I did the same technique with a lighter hand of ink and I didn't re-ink any of this. This is all the ink that was already on my daubers from that first inking. And here's that mask we created with the Gina K Masking Magic. And you can see the ink has not gone through at all. I did about 10 cards using this one mask, maybe more than that, maybe about 12 cards. And it's still good to go. I could still keep using it if I wanted to. Honestly, I know it's a bit on the pricier side, but I bought two packs about a year ago and I'm still using them and I cannot believe how amazing they work. These are the other ones I did here. I did the leaf stencil with the paper rose um, stencil, this one here. Uh, and then I did the middle one, obviously with the dots that you saw me do earlier. And then I used this maze stencil from Dolly Dimples Crafts uh, for sort of a more masculine kind of card. Once I use these stencils, I really whip through these cards really fast. I mean, this was all done in probably less than an hour. I did all these backgrounds and I stamped them all. It was so much fun. And because it didn't take very much time, and it went so quick, I got out the stencils again and I decided to decorate my envelopes and put the envelopes with the cards straight away. I've actually given away four of these cards already, <laughs> these happy birthday ones. I love them so much. And there have been nonstop birthdays this week for a lot of my friends. I've already given them away. <laughs> I've got four of them given away. So really simple and quick to do. If you're using stencils, this is fast, fast, fast. Obviously, if you did the stamps, you could just chuck in a card after card after card and whip them out as well. So I did purple on the top of the envelope and then I did the pink on the envelope and I think I like the tone on tone better. Um, so whatever you prefer, but you can always just cover that flap of your envelope and it really ties in beautifully with the card. So it's a quick and easy way to jazz it up a little bit more. Now I want to have my stamps kind of shape to my stenciled shape. So what we're gonna do is take our stamp and we're going to place a clear block over top of our stenciled image and then we can kind of just curve that stamp as we stick it to our block. So you get this gorgeous, fun way of adhering a more curved looking stamp. So your stamp kind of matches with your image on your paper. Now this is also, I forgot to mention at the very beginning, this is a great one layer card. So there are no bits of dimension to it. You can post this for really nice and cheap. Obviously if you're in America, I've been told by lots of people that you cannot send square cards without incurring a fee, but lots of people have said if you just stick it in a normal size envelope in a square envelope, then you get charged the same normal sort of postage fee. So in the UK, we don't get charged funny fees for different shaped cards, so we can send square ones nice and easy. Um, but you don't have to do square, as I said at the beginning, you could just do a normal shaped card and then apply the same technique to it. So use a circle stencil or circle mask that you created and then you can shape your stamps to that. Now I'm going to do happy birthday on the inside and I wanted that happy to get a bit closer to the birthday so I am stamping birthday first on all my cards and then doing happy on all my cards. Now obviously if you think back to the beginning when we use stamps this is how you could do your stamped image. You could just stick in another card base, make sure you line it up in the same place and then you could go to town and have a whole bunch of cards like you do with the stencils if you've got stamps to use up. So I've done the birthday and I'm adding in the happy and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. And honestly, it took less than 10 minutes to do all these cards with all their stamping. It was so quick and easy. And I think that's why I ended up making so many of this one version. I just loved the colors. I loved how it looked and I loved the end result. So there are my cards finished. And this is what I was saying earlier. On the right, I've got the stamped image. On the middle one, it was really dark. So I did die cut um, letters. I accidentally got them a bit too high at my cards. So that's die cut in the middle. It is easier to see in person. And on the left there, you can see that I heat embossed over that one because that one was a bit dark as well. So I heat embossed, which made it a bit shiny and kind of stood out a little bit more. 
So there are three different ways that you could go ahead and add a sentiment on the front, um, but with all of them I use those tiny little strip sentiments and curve them to fit my card. On the rest of my cards that I did, um, with all the different stencils, I did the exact same stamping and just shoved it in my platform, didn't have to line it up because it's all the exact same. The mask was lined up exactly on the card base, so my stamping was the same in every single one of them because that central focal point was the same on every single card. So really quick and easy, fun way to do some fast card making that are quite simple and nice and flat for easy for postage. I hope you had a great time with me tonight. Please do like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed my content, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care. Bye.